Hey everybody, we've got a uh, BenQ HT 1075 to look at today. Uh, this was sent in by a uh, by another viewer who uh, took a stab at it, and they weren't quite able to get it working properly. So they uh, talked to them through email, and then we decided the best thing was to have me look at it. So it uh, showed up this morning, and we're going to see what's going on. Here's the bottom. You can see it's a 1075. It has the, uh, let's see, what year was it? 2014? I saw that somewhere. Sorry, 2015, May 2015, it was made. And it's a refurb, which personally I prefer refurbs. I feel like then, you know, somebody went over it a few times. And uh, pardon my voice, I got something, I don't know. It's winter, what are you going to do? So anyway, let's uh, confirm the problem. Plug her on in. We got our standby light. It went orange. That's good. Hit power. Flashing green. That's good. We got fans. I don't really hear the color wheel, though. Oh, we got a lamp light already. Something's up. You can see. So let's uh, let's get inside and see what's going on here. Lamp door screw out. Just gonna wait for this to finish the shutdown series so that or shutdown procedure so that when we plug it back in, it starts from nothing again. And if uh, if you guys saw my videos on the uh, the other Ben Qs I did the. Uh, 6 MX610 I think it was. I'll put links down there, but these are very similar. So let's unplug it. I got that screw out. Let's take the uh, lamp door off and take a look. Let's see if anything obvious jumps out at us. Doesn't look too dirty in there. That's good. Drain those capacitors. Let's get the, uh, the film, lamp film off as they call it in the service manual. It's to help with airflow. Then let's take a look at the uh, the lamp. It felt like it was in right. Let's see, it looks like an original. Yeah, that's probably the original. And the bulb's got some use, but it's not too bad. I'm looking down at that that globe down there i don't see a whole lot of white you can also see that lens is good it's got the nice red coating so let's set this lamp off to the side i don't think the lamp is part of the issue at all i think the color wheel is not spinning personally because I, I didn't hear it so what we'll do first that's the uh, door switch. Find something to jam in there to hold it. That should do it. So what we're going to be looking for is if we see that color wheel spin up, we get a flashlight too. So plug in the power. I'll show you that switch actually kills power to the thing. See? So, put that back in. So, we want to see if that in there rotates after we hit power. Because it thinks there's a lamp in there right now. And we got no rotation so far. Nothing. That's just sitting there. So that's definitely something to be concerned about. Let's see. Yep, got air coming out of the blower fan. The exhaust fan's running. Color wheel's not spinning up. So we'll, uh, we'll investigate that. So let me just yank the power cord. Let's 
Let's open it up. should be able to pull the top off you can see somebody was already in in the back but I'll just go around and just kind of work those loose oh and then we got a screw right there forgot to put that one I always forget that one of course now that I said that I'll probably never forget it comes off. There's no keyboard on this one to worry about. Keyboard's built in. Let's take a look at Mr. Color Wheel Wire. I think I see the problem. Let's see if you guys can see it. Let's see if I can get that to focus on it. The uh, To me it looks like the cable cracked. See that white line right there yeah it even feels like it yep so the uh, color wheel wire it somehow uh, cracked like that who knows how being upside down you know unplugging replugging maybe but that is definitely, oh, where are we at here? That's definitely a problem. Let's see if we can focus a little better on it so you guys can see it. See? Let's, uh, let me get the meter. Let's see if there's any continuity. So really, I should be able to go. We should have beeping here. I should have beeping across there, and we don't. I can see it. It's just it's broken. But this tends to be pretty straightforward to fix. What we need to do get this blue piece off we're going to reuse this uh, blue backing so I'm going to get it started before we trim the uh, wire we're going to cut the wire back and then essentially restrip it come on you can do it there we go so I got that off I brought a little bit of the old uh, connector with it so I'm going to have to clean all that off that's okay And then we got to trim that. Uh, get the good ones. Then we got to cut that straight. Like that. Then I just got to get something to set this on so we can scrape that open. All right, so. The next step is going to be to clean that plastic off so that we can make new contacts. I got a piece of tape. It's going to touch it a little bit in the middle so it peels off easy. This is um, gaffer's tape, so it won't, it shouldn't leave any sticky deposits. I'm just going to tape it down. This piece of plastic. It's an old battery door I printed for something that I ended up not needing so that I don't get confused just put a little black dot so I know which side's supposed to be up then there's a couple ways we can get that open you can scrape it with a knife a little bit of sandpaper I'm going to try a 
diamond Dremel wheel and just scrape at it and see if that exposes the wires like I want. And I'll use that screwdriver to hold it flat. Probably should just use a razor blade. I don't think this is working as well as I expected it to. Yeah, a little bit. It's starting to. You know, it's funny, every time I do this, I try different methods, but I always end up just going back to using a screwdriver. What I'm going to end up doing here is I'm not going to scrape it clear all the way to the end. I'm going to scrape it back about a quarter inch, and then... We're going to cut the very end straight. Like that. Then, yeah. Now that's ready. Now we will have to put that little uh, blue piece back on. So let me get set up for that. So now I got the, uh, the plastic bit ready. And we'll hit it with a little bit of uh, glue. All this does is make this thing thick enough to hold tight. So it doesn't have to be perfect, perfect, but you want it pretty perfect. There we go. Now I'm just squeezing it with the flat part of these little needle nose just to get that super glue to set up nicely. So now this I'm doing this right, which I which I am. So not feeling good today. Sore throat and all that. Anyway, let me get the uh, speaker wire out of the way so that I can reach in and we'll slide. Color wheel wire in. that speaker wire back in so that's plugged in I think it's in far enough it feels like it maybe not though there's only one way to find out and that is to Jimmy the switch in a little uh, tool here Nope. <laughs> yeah, we'll just use a screwdriver like that. All right. Get our power cord. Down in, bad end. Let's set the lamp in too, because if I have that wire. And properly, this lamp should fire right up. We'll put Mr. Lamp Screw in to keep it pointed correctly at the color wheel. 
All right, and power. Hey, I heard the wheel start up. We can see the lamp now. We got the BenQ splash screen with lines all over it. Oh, that's a shame. See? Hoping that's a connection to the DMD, but we'll find out. Let's turn it off. It's not a loose connection, it's a bad connection. Oh, come on. Initiating, please wait. Now off. Let's see if I can smother it. No. I mean I could cheat and unplug a fan and then it'll turn off. There we go. So that means we got to go in a little further. I suspect it's a connection problem in here or the DMD itself. So I'll make a little bit of space. And I'll carefully unplug my now repaired color wheel wire. There we are. Train capacitors. So we got to check that connection under there. So I will carefully plug my color wheel repair. And then I'll start unplugging things, ballast wire, exhaust fan, power supply fan, DMD fan, speaker. That's good. Color wheel sensor. Oh, and blower fan. Now we should be able to pop this open. I just hope it's not something that's damaged in there. That would really be a shame. Then RS two thirty two and then the VGA. Two, we can lift the main board out and take a look at the DMD board there. Okay, I don't see anything obvious. No scratches, nothing that looks like those pins would have pulled apart. Let's pop the uh, optic block out and look at the chip. I'm hoping 
that reseeding it all will solve the issue. I'm not sure. But it's worth a shot. Oh, that one. Oh, ground. This is where I want to look. I'm thinking maybe we'll disassemble the DMD board and then reassemble and see if that uh, gets it all stuck back together. probably do is check with the guy and see if he had this out because this is the other place the problem could be if um, the chip in there isn't connected properly that'll cause it so let's let's pop the heat sink off and take a look So that came off really easy. So he must have had this apart. The um, heat sink paste should be sticking. It's not. If it wasn't taken apart. So let's pop that out. Set that down. I don't see any damage. That's good. No stuck pixels. That's good. I don't see any ghost image. That's also good. Let's... Find my flathead. Oh, there we go. We'll unlock it and take the chip out. No bent pins. No broken pins. I'll reseat it. Then I gotta get some, uh, you get some heat sink compound. All right, the other thing I want to do is clean the old stuff off. Isopropyl on there and all right, I like that. So it kind of helps clean the pins a little bit. Set that back in. Let's lock it. Then I get a clean, dry Kim wipe. Just give the top a uh, wipe down. I see what it looks like. Schmutz. There we go, that's much better. There was a little something in the corner. 
No, it's not. All right, so I'm gonna. Oh, oh. Shim slash mask. There we are. It's down all the way. That feels good. Now we'll clean the uh, the back of the heat sink. All right. So got some fresh heat sink compound. Just a little dab. That might even be too much. There we go. All right, they're back in. It's good. Now let's set them back in here. getting those to drop down can be touchy and then to put the uh, optic screws back in I'm going to do that by hand screw or mix it up so I'm going to leave that there. Should I put the lamp back in? Make it easy. So worst case it's got a bad uh, DMD or there's a broken trace somewhere in here but I'm hoping reseeding everything takes care of it if not then well we'll figure it out and I'll let the fella know if it ends up being more of a hassle than it's worth I do like being able to fix these and get the videos up so that when other people have this problem they can find the video and uh, repair it themselves.
that's no, oh, that one. And again, remember this has got to line up with that. Good. So let's plug stuff back in and we will see what happens when I fire it up. Oh, the shoe came off the foot. Let's shove that back in there. There we are. And I'm going to put one screw in here just to keep the main board from picking up. So let's see, flathead, switch in. Cord. Let's see if we still have lines or not. Looking better. Hey, we got it. All right. Look at that. No lines. See uh, menu. For a test. There it is. There we go. That looks good. Perfect. Very happy. Still booting up. So once it finishes booting up, we'll shut it down and we'll put it back together. Oh, still booting. Well, it's getting there. So they got to warm up all the way. You don't want to short cycle a lamp if you can help it. And off. And off. And off. Hey, I got it that time. All right, fans are off. Let's unplug that. Drain the capacitors. Remove that. 
you pop the screw out so that we can get ready to put this back on. I want to just kind of straighten those metal tangs a little bit. I like it. I like it. I like it. So far, so good. So that'll go there. That will eventually go there. All right. I'm going to put these in by hand so I don't over tighten them. in there that's good I'm like whoops come on underneath there we are that's good Let's see I thought I had one more left is this on back this is on backwards I don't know why companies do that. This is, I see this all the time. See, it's supposed to lock there. There we go. I was going to say, I was I kept looking at that thinking, man, that doesn't look right. All right, so that goes back in there. And this will slide down in there. There we go color wheels in Let's pull that sensor wire over so it doesn't get caught on the fan or uh, the lamp I mean so that's good internally let's get put the back on It's just the sticker, okay. Two. Um, there we are. HDMI screws. I like these 1075s, they have that trigger. There's a lot of projectors that have the 12 volt trigger, but they just lay these out nicely. There's not too much going on, which I really like. There we go, hook that up. Then we have the uh, five millimeter uh, DB9 and DB15 fasteners to put in for here. Whoops. I prefer when you don't have to take those out, of course, but what are you going to do? Get this started. Man, this guy's going to be really stoked. He, uh, I think he was expecting it not to be repairable. At least that was the impression I got. Maybe he was just being realistic because I wasn't sure what I was getting into. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. I do like it when it does work out though. So I like fixing stuff. Anything to keep stuff out of the waste stream is good by me. All right, so those are in. 
foot up. It's good. And then uh, put the top on now. Oh, we got cracked screw tower there and there. So I think we'll fix those first. So just put a little bit of super glue in there. Let's see if we can get that to snug up on itself. We might hit it with some shriek, shrink heat shrink tubing. There we go. Come on, Frank, use your words. There's a little air bubble of glue there. I think that'll be good. Again, I don't want to go nuts, like over fix it. But that all looks good now. So now we can put the top on. I mean, you can still see a little crack, but that's okay. The majority of it's all nice and tight. And then when you put the top on, Pay attention to that right there. This little clip is going to grab up in the front there. I'll show you. Now and make sure that pin and the one on the other side go in their corresponding holes there. then see that clip goes down there all right that looks good now it just needs some screws screws in the bottom I'm going to put in again by hand since I did glue those screw towers it'll just make it a little smoother and it allows me to find the original thread and again not cut a new thread so I just kind of you know rotate the screw backwards until I feel it drop and that's how I know when it's ready to run down the rest of the way These uh, HT10 XX series projectors are pretty sweet. You know, it's a, a lot of features and a relatively inexpensive package. I think these were what a thousand, twelve hundred new, something like that. There we go. get our little uh, oh crap what do they call that membrane or something I'm trying to remember what it said in the service manual I forget it's got to make sure we don't cover up that hole because that's where the door switch button goes that's what tells it that the uh, lamp door is on like that then Mr. Lamp Screw. Then let's see, I'll just give it a little, little spray with some cleaner. Alright, 
So that's good. Um, let's bring it over. We'll set it up. I'll get it testing, and uh, then we can call this video good. And this is my uh, test area. Let's get a power cord. I'm not using the laptop, so I'll put that away. Let's get a good old Raspberry Pi. I think this is like a version 2 or something. It's an old one. Let's see. Model B Plus V1.2. 2014. Man, I think six years old. It still works, though. So that's booting up. Let's get this projector in a good spot. And then let's make sure his remote's working good. All right, got a flashy green. That's good. Okay, so you can see the menu there. Pi still booting up. <coughs> there we go. Let's get that menu off. So, what I'll do is I'm going to let the Pi just run. And uh, I'll put a video up and just, you know, let it do stuff. Make sure the uh, DLP chip's happy. And once I get a couple hours on it, we'll know it's good. And I'll pack it up and get it sent back to them. So, um, you know, if you... Let's see, internet, we'll get that going. All right, so I'm not gonna let this go on video. We're gonna wrap up the video here. So if you have any questions about your BenQ, uh, the 1070, HT 1075, 1070, MX610, any of those, 1060, 1080, all that stuff, go ahead and uh, stick it in the comments or send me an email, sales at wheezytech.com. W E E Z Y T E C H dot com, and uh, we can discuss what your options are and if I uh, have any suggestions for you. So, uh, as always, thank you for watching.